before the presidential election petition tribunal started sitting, precisely around the time P2B and the Labour Party filed their petition, INEC told Nigerians that they will prove that the election was conducted in a free and fair manner, that all the results, everything that they did, were correct. Even in one of their responses to the Labour Party's petition, they said that all results were uploaded to the IREF. This is in contrast to more than 18,000 polling units results that are blurred on the IREF, which, of course, is useless because it defeats the aim of uploading them on the IREF in the first place. If collection officers cannot use these figures because they are supposed to, by law, make reference to the results on IREF when they are doing collation, but if they can't see them, that means they didn't make use of them, so they can't count as being uploaded. Now, let's compare what INEC has said in the past to what they did at the tribunal proper. Many people were expecting that INEC would come to the tribunal to bring a lot of evidence to say, yes, this is what we did. We said this person got this here, he got those votes here. This is it. Look at it, sir. My lords, please see it. See that we did the right thing. But that was not the case. Also, many were expecting that they would have called two or three polling officers or collation officers to come and explain and provide information to back what they did during the presidential election. But they were only able to call just one witness against Labour Party. That witness also came to defend only the upload, which, looking at the petition and all the pleas that the Labour Party made, that means they just came to defend non-compliance. We'll come to that in a moment. The INEC witness not only talked about a glitch, he also talked about the patches that they sent in order to mitigate the glitch that prevented the upload of presidential election results. We all know this is just a fabrication because there's no way a glitch can distinguish between presidential election results and senatorial or House of Reps results. The application running on the beavers sends the same packet of data. They are all the same. If it's an image, the receiver or the IREF sees it as the same. It's just that the information in the image is different from each other. So there's no way it can distinguish and say, oh, I will glitch here since this one is presidential election results or this one is senatorial election results. I don't need to glitch here. Maybe they think no one knows anything about IT in Nigeria, that no one knows how network infrastructure works. It's just not possible that a glitch will distinguish which one it will accept or not. And going by the videos that many people made during the presidential election in many polling units across Nigeria, many INEC polling unit officers were saying that they couldn't log in, that their passwords don't work. So it means it was purely an administrative issue. Someone at the top blocked their access to the server. They blocked their passwords, they blocked the presidential election results upload. I should have clicked. Another thing to note about the glitch that they refer to is that it was so widespread. Think of it like a network outage. A network outage cannot be as widespread as that, the whole Nigeria. Yes, they are not exactly the same thing, but we are talking about a website here. If it is off, everything about it should be off, not some working and others not working. So it's clearly an administrative issue. Someone at the top pulled the plug and prevented the upload of the presidential election results. Yes, this has been proven by the evidence submitted by the Labour Party witness, the lady that works with Amazon. She tendered AWS reports in six regions across the world that proves that there was no glitch on the day of the presidential election. The Labour Party legal team should have taken this a step further by issuing a subpoena to INEC to tender their back-end server report so that the court and Nigerians will know who truly logged in and made all the changes that prevented the upload of presidential election results. Yes, that person must be fished out. Is it the ICT department? Whoever had administrative rights few days or on the day of election must be fished out to know why he blocked the access. Also, a lot of people criticized the LP counsel that cross-examined the INEC witness that he wasn't asking questions that they wanted him to ask. A lot of things were said, but that's not how cross-examination works. A lawyer cross-examining a witness must at least ask relevant questions. Ask him questions that are in his witness statement. If you ask him questions that are not related to what he said, that means they are not relevant to the proceeding. 
Not that you cannot ask him any question to just push his mind away and come back again to attack and, you know, get the truth from him in case he was trying to lie or be dismissive. It's an art that many people practice the way they want. The most important thing is that the Labour Party already said that there was no glitch. By providing information, they tendered from AWS themselves, the owner and host of the INEC IREF. So whatever the INEC witness came to do in court was just to push the narrative away from just the glitch. He also included patches, you know, that they released patches to mitigate the glitch or whatever he was trying to say. So after looking at the performance of INEC and their witness in court, you will see that they have left the issue of non-compliance at the discretion of the judges. They have nothing to prove that they complied 100% with the law. So they are now leaving that responsibility to the judges to look at all the evidence before them and say, ah, did INEC really comply or didn't they comply? Like already said in many videos, the position of the law is straightforward. Before a collation can happen at the ward level, the collation officer, after seeing the result from the polling officer from a particular polling unit under the same ward, he will first of all check the beaver's machine. Why is he checking the beaver's machine? To make sure that the total votes on the form EC8A from that polling unit is not higher than the number of accredited voters in that same polling unit. That's the very first thing he should do in order to know that these votes are valid. Because if they are higher than the number of accredited voters in the polling unit, that means there was overvoting. So he shouldn't even continue the process of collation, except they determine what went wrong. Why was there more votes than the number of accredited persons that voted in the polling unit? In case he verifies that it is correct that the number is actually the same or lower, then he can proceed to the next stage. The next stage is to verify from IREF. This result this man is giving me, is it the same that they uploaded at the same unit? He will see the copy of the results on IREF by just logging in and checking the results. If they are the same thing, he will proceed to the next polling officer. This he will do in all the polling units under the ward before he will start entering the figures in the form EC8B. Also, in any case that there is a dispute of one of the results and they can't find a copy on the IREF, the law says that the next in line in terms of the superiority of the result sheets is the police copy. So if there are some policemen that accompany the polling officers to the ward collation center, the collation officer is authorized by law to use the police copy. He will take the police copy from that polling unit and use it as a template to resolve the issue. If in any case that there is no police copy, that the police lost their copy or whatever happened is unreadable, anything, he will now resort to the political party copy. That means he will quickly just tell any political party agent from that polling unit, please hand me your results. That will be used to do comparison and they will say, okay, yes, this is the real result. That's how it works. That's what the law says. So it's now left for the judges as INEC couldn't prove that they did the right thing. They didn't have any witness that could testify and say, this is what we did that day, this is this, this is that, to convince the judges. The judges will now look at all the evidence submitted so far. They will now look and say, ah, did these people truly follow the process as prescribed by the Elotro law and their own guidelines? If they deem it fit that INEC did not follow the process that they violated the Elotro law, where will it lead? It will mean that Labour Party and PDP proved their case that they proved that INEC violated the law, that there was substantial violation of the law, which is a ground for cancellation of the election. Yes, that's the position of the law. And according to the EU report, only 31% of the presidential election results were uploaded as at the time the INEC chairman was announcing the winner. So if, according to the law, only a third of the entire results were on IREF. That means more than 60% of the results were not there and the same magnitude applies to the non-conformity of the law. It is absolutely substantial. So it will lead to a cancellation of the election. That EU report came out on time because the PDP legal team actually submitted it. They tendered it to court while they were questioning and cross-examining the INEC witness. So the evidence is before the judges the EU is not an interested party. They were not part of the election they came to observe and they made a report of their observations, very explosive observations. So is the tribunal heading to a cancellation of the election? 
In the next video, we'll answer that question that is on everyone's lips, including people who are genuinely asking the question. People that even support P2B, they're asking, why didn't P2B prove that he won the election? You know, that they didn't provide the figures, they didn't do this, they didn't do that. Yes, majority of people asking this question are not making a mockery. They just want to know. For time constraints, so that not to make this video too long, we'll answer the question in tomorrow's video. Thanks for watching. Five, three hundred and fifty.